Rogers, and today I'm interviewing Professor Health. How you doing, Professor? Health? Great. Good to see you again. Um, first off, I want to let people know more about you. The Bronx, New York. The Bronx, New York. Okay. Yes. I think I kind of always knew. I had a moment where I flirted with being a lawyer. I had a moment where I flirted with being a preacher. Um, uh, and so I think deep down I always knew I could teach history uh, in junior high and high school. And at Fisk it was sort of there because I had such good mentors in history at Fisk. Right. And then um, eventually God will lead you and you'll find the path. Right. And so it's not a job for me. I love teaching history. I was at a majority school for uh, about nine years, right, right. and I was blessed and had many wonderful experiences. Uh, Rick, I got to see the world, right. Europe and Africa, and at a certain point I felt uh, a need, a compulsion to want to give back to black people, and I'm honest about that. I, I make no bones about that. Um, I love black people, and I wanted to give something back to black people specifically. And I wanted to share my experiences in London and Paris, you know, um, and Switzerland and different parts of Africa with black kids who ordinarily would probably not see a person like me. Yeah, right. right. Um, and so uh, I made a very wise decision. And I thank God for it every day to come down to Savannah State. There's nothing like teaching smart black kids to be able to right. interact with kids like you and the great camera woman uh, there, right, recording the video, to be able to see black kids doing these kinds of things in class, not selling drugs, right. all of the stereotypical things that are tied to young black people, especially young black males, to see you guys go to Africa, go to Nigeria, go to Spain, right. you're in algebra classes, trigonometry classes, engineering classes. It helps me convey to people beyond our campus that the way in which black people are often, not always, but often seen in this country, is sort of silly and narrow. There's so many, man, like every week, to be honest with you, you, oh, you learn, a good teacher learns from students, you know, on a regular basis, and certainly I have here and elsewhere too before I got here. Um, wow, it's hard to narrow it down to one. I've had so many. Today we had a good discussion about Bill Clinton and politics in the U.S. history class. Um, good conversation, good debate. Um, I like that. I encourage that in my classes. There have been so many good moments in honesty. Okay, okay. Well, I was going to ask you, have you learned from teaching students? Oh, but how no. have they helped you learn since you've told me? You guys have a perspective now that's much different than mine. You're younger, right? right. You're from all parts of the South and right. the Northeast. And so if you're from Philadelphia or, you know, some little tiny town, you know, Tunisia, Georgia, yeah. right? Population 25. Your perspective is a different one than my, my Bronx perspective. Right. And, a, and an educated person always should seek to be even more educated. You ought to learn from students, like I said, on a regular basis. Right, 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 right. Well, I'm going to start the PhD. This is um, February of 2011. I'll be starting in August. I'd like to teach when I'm post-PhD a couple of years. But I'd like to move into administration, okay. be a dean or vice president, you know, or college president one day. So that's the long-term future, God willing. Okay, so how long do you think it's going to take for you to get your PhD? Oh, it should be four to five years. Four to five years. No more than five. I'm really pushing for four. I'm going to work hard and get things done, hopefully, in about in four. Okay, and then you plan on teaching or well, being a dean in Savannah or elsewhere or wherever? I would love to come back because I love Savannah. I love right. the area. I love the people. It's a wonderful place. It's a magical city and a magical place. I'd be blessed to come back here. I'm not sure if I'd come back to Savannah State. Right, right. But coming back to Savannah, to Georgia would be a blessing. Right, right, right. I'd like to believe that I will be in administration at some school. I prefer an HBCU somewhere in the low country from the coast of North Carolina to the coast of Florida. A dean or VP, hell, hell, even a president. Um, that way you can really impact policy right. Right, right, in a real way. From the classroom, you really can't impact policy. From the admin end, you can impact policy and procedure, and that's what I'm, I'm hoping I'll be doing.
before I um, conclude this interview, I would like to ask you one more question. Uh, what made you want to go from being a professor to a dean? The, you really want to affect outcomes. Right now, from the classroom end of it, you're, you're impacting incomes. People are coming in right. and you hope to make them a better student, yeah. a more whole student and learner than when they go out. But impacting the outcome, that's where the real quote unquote power is to shape these schools HBCUs to make them better institutions. Right, the right. outcome. Rate. Because it's all up to the administrators. All up to the administrators and the policies they set, the students they admit and don't admit, right? right. The faculty they hire and don't hire and fire, right? right. All of the outcome side of it. Okay. If I want to be there. Alright. Well, thanks for uh, doing this Black interview King. with me Anytime. today, man. Anytime, Black King. I appreciate it. I'm Ricky Waters, and this concludes my interview.